What is the best way to run a software development company post-pandemic? Pandemic has given us multiple options on how we approach work, whether that be full-time in the office, fully remote, or a hybrid approach. In this video, I came across a very interesting article which mentioned Zoom, a telecommunications company which brought people together through the pandemic through their meeting and collaboration software. I'll jump on the details in a second, but the short story is they've now requested some of their staff come back into the office and have a hybrid approach. That got me thinking, what is the best way for a software development company to have their staff? Let's jump into the article and have a quick look at what Zoom has done. Zoom, the video communications company whose name became synonymous with remote working through the pandemic, has ordered staff back to the office. Now, how interesting is this? Zoom, the company who pushed throughout the entire pandemic to have people work from home and use their collaboration software, is now post-pandemic expecting their staff to return back to the office. I want to investigate this a bit further and see is that the best approach. The firm said it believed a structured hybrid approach was the most effective and people living within 50 miles of an office should be working in person at least twice a week. It's the latest push by a major firm to row back flexible working policies. Amazon and Disney are among the firms that have reduced remote working days and surveys suggest that workers are still holding on to the ability to work from home. The stats here say about 12% of workers in the US where Zoom is headquartered were fully remote and 29 had hybrid policies. Again, to summarize here, there's really three ways to work in a software development environment. One, fully remote from home. Two, a hybrid approach where you have between one and four days in the office per week. Generally speaking, I see two to three days as the median to what people go for, or you have a fully in-office setup. Now, obviously, prior to the pandemic, essentially all software development companies were almost all in office. Some software development companies were tinkering with some sort of remote work from home, but it was only one, potentially two days per week. It was more of a bonus rather than an expected. Now, post-pandemic, what is the best way to run a business? And what is the best way to get the most out of software developers and also attract the best talent? Let's first have a look at a fully remote setup. I'm going to use an article I found here on Zapier, which is a large low-code automation platform, where they have a fully remote setup. Founded in 2012, Zapier has neither a main office nor a sales team, although it regularly brings its employees together for off-site gatherings. For Zapier, not having office-related distractions helped to focus more on product market fit. Remote work requires more discipline. You have to make sure that you are documenting your work, but here's the kick up. As companies get to a certain size, you have to do this anyway, even if you're not remote, so it forces you to have good habits early on. And I 100% agree with this. If you're gonna have a fully remote workforce, you're gonna have to have ability to document and share documents far easier than if you have an in-office environment. In an in-office environment, there's a lot more organic sharing of information. People walking to the water cooler, or walking down the halls, and talking to their colleagues at their desk. In a remote office environment, obviously people aren't going to see each other and talk about what's going on with this task or talk about what's going on with this feature. So you're going to have to have some very clear defined structures around how things are documented and how things are shared. And what Zapier is saying here is 100% correct in the fact that in a larger company, let's say you get to a scale of 100 or even 1,000 staff, you're going to have to have these document processes anyway because even in a fully in-office environment with 1,000 staff, everyone is not going to see everyone on a daily basis and so you need to disseminate information really well. So for me, this is one of the real positives for remote working. It really instills those really good values early on and it makes sure that you have those documentation processes and those abilities to let your staff know what's going on baked in from the early days. I've got another article here from the poster boy Atlassian, who is also for the fully remote working. Under its new team anywhere policy, Atlassian's 5,700 staff around the world can work from any location in the country where Atlassian has a corporate entity, where they have a legal right to work, and where the time zone they're in is broadly aligned with that of their teams. Now, I also want to bring attention here to both what Zapier has said and what Atlassian has said here. They've asked Atlassian to meet together four times a year in the office. I think it's an important distinction and it's something I'm going to touch on a little bit later here at Flying Noggy. We also operate a fully remote working policy, but as per Zapier and Atlassian, we also run multiple events each year to get all of our staff together to talk to each other. And I think this is what happens with one of these approaches. Some kind of get pigeonholed into being a fully one way or full of the other, whereas in reality, there is some nuances you need to do to each thing. So now for fully remote working, Atlassian and both Zapier say that they get together for full staff gatherings three to four times a year. I believe this is a fantastic approach. It both allows people to work from home and run those well-documented systems. It gives people flexibility and also gives the companies good reach to employ from various areas around the world. As we know, talent has been hard to come by, so we're able to open your borders and recruit far and wide while they get the best staff. But there's also some truth to it that people knowing people in person does bring some communication and collaboration. And this is where I think these meetups become very important. Meeting two, three, four, five times a year, all together in one location, is a fantastic way to bring team members together. Here at Flying Donkey, we do a similar thing. I personally fly out to our Turkey office once or twice a year and bring all the team members together. The other times of the year, the team will also get together once or twice a year and catch up, whether it's over a lunch or a dinner, or go play some pool down the local pub. It's important that if you are working remotely and you're getting the benefits of that, that you also spend the money that you're saving on potentially rent and other overheads that you can put some events on to bring people together. So we've chatted a bit about the full remote system. Let's have a look at the hybrid policy. Now I'm gonna pull up another couple of companies who are doing this just to show you where 
there is no one defined way where everyone is doing this. There is split models on how people are approaching this problem. Here's an article from The Guardian. When Tim Cook sent his workforce home in March 2020, calling the pandemic a challenging moment, it is unlikely the Apple chief executive anticipated that he would battle on his hands to get these workers back to the office two and a half years later. It took just a few days for Apple employees to hit out against the tech giant's demand for a staff to return three days a week. So again here, we look at Apple's taking the hybrid approach. And again, it's that three days in the office, two days from home. I'll jump down a little bit further in the article, but you can see that they're dictating three days a week, whereas Tesla has been more hardline with their approach to try and get everyone to return to office full time. And essentially, Elon has been quoted saying, if you don't show up, we will assume you have resigned. Now, that's fairly hard line from Elon, and he obviously has some pretty outspoken ideas. But you can see here that both Tesla and Apple are looking at this hybrid or potentially full-time in the office approach. Again, they push the things here that they want collaboration and people working together, and that's the positive you can get from working in an office. Now, I wanted to highlight a couple of interesting issues that actually happen with hybrid working, and some that I've experienced myself in my working career. And that is, when there's a hybrid situation, you're going to have these, what I call, second-class citizens. And so, when you're doing the hybrid model, generally there's one of two ways it's done. One, there's a flexible way where you can come into work whichever of the three days you want per week. Or I think as in Apple's case, they're trying to push people to come to the office a standard three days a week. So that would be Tuesday to Thursday. And the reason behind this is because in a hybrid approach, you can get what's called second class citizens. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this, where potentially you're in a meeting and you're in a meeting in an office with say four or five people, but there's three or four people dialing in from home. So you have this sort of quasi in office, but remote meeting. And the problem here is, that when you're in a meeting room, having a conversation is far more fluent and easy than when you're doing it remotely. So some of the conversations are lost to the people who are remote. Conversely, if all of those seven or eight people were remote, then none of those conversations are lost. They can't read body language. They can't see anything that's not being said. And so this hybrid model does bring up some challenges because for me, I think either you need to be fully in office or you need to be fully at home because you don't want to make these second class citizens. Now, Apple's approach is interesting here because they're forcing this hybrid model but with a set three days in the office. Another quick point to bring up on hybrid is going to be the cost of real estate and hot desking. Now, again, I've said in this hybrid model, there's only two approaches. One is you can come on whichever days you like, or you come in on the set days. Now, the problem here is real estate is a fixed asset. And that means when you've got a certain amount of staff, you have to buy a certain amount of desks for them. If you're all going to come in three days a week, that means you have to have a full set of desks for your full set of staff. So even though on Monday and Friday they aren't used, essentially four out of the seven days your office is empty, three of the days they are full. So what this means is you lose some of the benefit of the remote working, which is where you get the reduced real estate cost. Now obviously the alternate to this is some of the hybrid approaches where they try and rent out say 80% of an office with the assumption that people will be in four days a week. Again, the problem with this method is that people turn up all on the same day and there's not enough desks. So can you see here, this is a challenging problem. Now I wanna summarize quickly here and see my thoughts. Firstly, there's three approaches to working. One is a traditional method where everyone is in the office, or you can take some sort of hybrid approach where there's some days in the office and some days at home, or finally, there's a fully remote working space. Now for me, IT development, SaaS products are in a very unique spot in that they are well attuned to working fully from home. There are a huge amount of jobs in the world where you could not even think about fully working from home, and it's not even an option. I think people have seen through the pandemic some of the very positives that work from home, and that is more productivity, people being happier in their jobs, and they're saving that time in their commute they're putting into their jobs. But bosses are also cognizant they want to get that communication, and they want to get those people talking to each other in the office, and that's why they try to implement these hybrid approaches. But as I described, that comes with challenges. You can sometimes have these second-rate citizens, and you still have this real estate cost you're not saving. My recommendation, and it's what we do here at Flying Donkey, is that you do try and operate in a fully remote way, putting those clear documentation processes in place early on. From there, you should be able to save on your various rent and real estate costs, and you should put those into multiple meetings over the course of the year. Therefore, you are getting the best of both worlds in the fact that people are collaborating together, and they're getting to know each other face-to-face, -face, as well as being able to open your boundaries to recruit far and wide. I'd be keen to hear your thoughts on what model works for you, both as an employee and an employer. I know there's a perfect answer here, but as Zoom's shown, even when you're in the space and you're pushing software that can help with collaboration, sometimes you also have to return to the office.